Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Anugo of New Home Sales. I'm your host, Anya Kersantan, and joining me today, not one, but two guests today. And I'd love to introduce Sean Roberts. Sean is the CEO of Villa Homes and Jessica Brown. Jessica Brown is the head of marketing. So welcome to the show, guys. I'm very excited to have you on the show today and for our conversation. Villa Homes is known as the largest ADU manufacturer in California. So we're going to get into the topic of housing, how we can make sure that we're maximizing affordable housing and how we can make it easy for our customers to purchase. So let's start things off with Sean. I'd love to hear a little bit of a backstory on how did you get here? Why did you uh, feel the need to, to get into this business? And uh, I'd love to hear a little bit of your backstory. Yeah, for sure. Well, I started my career in finance initially in investment banking and then in private equity and then real estate private equity. So I have a pretty deep grounding in real estate finance. And then about five, almost six years ago, I left the investing world to work on a different startup, which I joined at a pretty early stage, was like employee 20, was an executive there. And we scaled up a real estate brokerage title company and mortgage company across several cities and several states. And raised a bunch of money, built a really good business, and it was a ton of fun. And then in being in that business, which was primarily focused on resale real estate, it became increasingly apparent to me that there's a lot of problems in the housing market and they're fundamentally rooted in a lack of supply and a lack of supply of attainable homes that are built in places that people want to live and work. And when I got to know the team at Villa and had the opportunity to come on board as CEO about a year ago, I was really excited about the business's mission, which is fundamentally about being the easiest, fastest, and most cost-efficient way to build homes. And that was incredibly resonant to me in our approach of building homes in infill locations using volumetric prefab construction is a really good way to add to the housing stock and provide more roofs over people's heads. And that was really compelling to me. And it's a really good business on top of that. So it's been a, a ton of fun. And that, you know, it's really about the mission of the company and solving a really big problem in the housing market that appealed to me. Great. So, and we're going to get into all of the problems that you guys are solving. So first, I'd love to hear from Jessica. So Jessica, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. How did you end up where you are now? I'm Jessica. I'm the director of marketing at Villa Homes. And I started my career about 10 years ago in marketing and I worked in agency work and then I worked for a series of different private companies as well. And similar to Sean, when I came across Villa and its mission essentially to help tackle some of the housing crisis. I, I live in Southern California, so finding places to live that are affordable within the areas that you want to work and be is extraordinarily difficult. And I saw a boom of ADUs that happened here and then stumbling across Villa um, really resonated with the mission and the technology and the way in which we're doing things. Typical construction companies are archaic almost. And so I, I love what Villa is doing and, and how we're doing it. I love that. So let's get into a little bit of what makes you guys unique. So for those listeners who may not be familiar with ADUs, I think it has certainly been a big topic of conversation, especially in the last five years, I'd say it's, you know, making a, a big impact on the market. And it, I think especially in California, places where housing is extremely expensive. And on top of that, there is not a ton of land <laughs> oftentimes. So if you don't mind giving us a little bit of a backstory of what exactly is an ADU and um, how does your business um, solve the problem? Yeah, well, the backup really to the beginning, our core focus is on putting housing in infill locations. So those are places that are, you know, places where people want to live and work. And they're generally either land that exists in an existing urban or kind of suburban area that's not yet developed, but should be housing. And often people refer to this as the missing middle in the housing market. And that can comprise several different types of housing, whether it's an ADU, a duplex or a triplex or a single family home or a townhome, there's lots of different housing products that can fit within this. 
but we play in that market. And about a quarter of all home building nationally is done in infill locations, which is about a, you know, it's a hundred billion dollar a year uh, addressable market for construction value. So that's what we focus on. And the way that we approach that is through what's called volumetric prefab construction, which is where homes are built in factories. And that allows us to build homes with our factory partners. We're not a factory, rather we outsource to a variety of different factory partners that we layer on top of, and we design the homes and we have them build it for us on a contract manufacturing basis. But the advantages of volumetric prefabricated construction really comes down to it's faster than traditional construction and it's cheaper than traditional construction, which allows us to be able to put homes in the ground in much needed infill locations cheaper and faster than other types of construction, which has been an absolute game changer for our ability to put homes where they need to be. And so we got the business started, and this is before both Jess and I joined about four years ago, and the business was focused on a direct-to-consumer model to sell backyard homes, ADUs in California, using prefab home designs that we created in our company. And since then, we've scaled the business to do that really well and profitably. And we've opened up additional channels to start doing ADUs for institutional clients throughout California. And as we go forward this year and beyond, we're also getting into building small communities of primary homes. And so all of this is geared around this notion of putting housing in infill locations using volumetric prefab. And that's proven to be a pretty, pretty good model. And that that's what we do. Great. So it's almost like you're a matchmaker between the manufacturers and the consumers. So Jess, I'd love to know, what are some of the biggest obstacles that you face when it comes to marketing to consumers with ADUs and prefab? I think historically, uh, when, you hate, when you say prefab, people have certain ideas in their mind. And <laughs> usually it's not uh, associated with, you know, a, a modern, beautiful home. So uh, talk to us a little bit, some of the myths that exist out there that you're working to dispel and what's the reality of a, of a prefab manufactured home? Yeah, absolutely. I think that oftentimes when people hear the word prefab, they automatically go to mobile home or trailer. So that's the thing that's most interesting about prefab is it has the same quality construction as a stick built home but it's placed on a real foundation. So it's actually considered real estate. So it adds equity to your home, which is fantastic in addition to additional space. And it can also be hooked up to the existing utilities in most cases for an ADU specifically, not with the multiple developments that Sean's speaking to, but that can be a huge benefit to homeowners, especially as we're looking at the struggles that people are facing. And I think that people haven't really completely grasped onto the idea that there are alternatives. So if you have parents that you need help aging in place, they can live in your backyard. If you have family members with disabilities, they can live in your backyard and have a, um, a sense of independence and that kind of thing. So that's really, it's more of the education process, I would say, is the biggest obstacle in this so that people understand the multitude of benefits of them, but also the quality of construction, the speed of construction, the fact that it is real estate and it's it's not nothing against mobile homes or trailers. Those are great <laughs> infill solutions as well, but that it is a real piece of property that will last you for decades. Yeah. And to build on that too, design matters a lot. And mm -hmm. so we have an in-house team that helps design the products that we have our factory partners build. And we build them to a really high quality standard to modern design. So the floor plans are designed for how people want to live. We build to nine foot ceiling heights generally. We build a really high fixture and finish level. And we use model homes as part of our sales process as well, because when you come and see and touch and walk around one of our home products, it really pops. And that matters a lot for someone who's about to spend a lot of money on putting a second home in their backyard. And helping with the decision fatigue. I mean, that's really the biggest thing too from our product department is that we really simplify the process. We have an online platform in our design studio that basically allows you to design a home similar to how you design a car. It makes it really, really easy. They can visualize it. We have team members that walk you through every step of the process. We handle everything from building to handling your keys. Um, and permitting, I think, is sometimes something that people think that they can handle on their own. And so that's somewhere where we can really be an asset because we've worked with pretty much every jurisdiction in California. And it's tricky. It's not as simple as you would think. And so that's our whole goal is to take 
kind of the monster factory decisions and bring them down to a level that we know are quality, we know work for your lifestyle and help you make the right decision for you and your family. A lot of people, when they hear ADU, it's almost like you think of like a, a shed, uh, like in the backyard shed, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially, if the space permits, it, it is it's built on a foundation. So it is a home, right? So is there a limitation to how large the home can be? Or is it all dictated by essentially your backyard space? Generally, it's dictated by the backyard space. So we we offer home designs that range from on the small end, 450 square feet for a studio, and on the high end, up to 1200 square feet. And our average unit is somewhere between 800 to 1000 square feet. So generally, we're finding folks tend to build pretty much the largest home that fits reasonably in their yard so that they can have the most space in the ADU. But it really comes down to what's allowable within, you know, the setbacks and the physical layout of the backyard. So it really varies from project to project, but generally we see folks trying to build as much home as they can, which makes sense. Absolutely. So I'd love to hear about who your buyer is, because there's definitely been a shift in the buyer profile in the market. It seems that the traditional family with 2.5 children and a dog, that's kind of like fading away. And now we see the rise of single uh, people buying a lot of uh, construction, especially women, uh, which is, uh, you know, more power to, <laughs> to single ladies out there. And a lot of those people are looking for solutions to, to make it easier to, to, pay their, to pay their mortgage. And oftentimes the decision to buy a home for the younger millennials and now older Gen Zs comes to the fact that they become pet owners and suddenly it's not the family anymore. I'm not buying a house because I'm having a baby, I'm getting married. It's because my dog and I want to have a backyard for my dog. So talk to me about who your typical buyer profile is and how do they tend to use this space? Is the buyer the, the person who's living in a large house, essentially, and then they're building this ADU to supplement their mortgage by maybe renting it out to somebody else? Or, you know, what's the, what's the typical scenario that you run, it, run into? You kind of hit the nail on the head with all of those scenarios. There is no typical scenario is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. different. Mm -hmm. There's there's tons of them. But like you said, there's multi-generational housing. Either the parents want to move into a smaller footprint and now the children are living in the main house or vice versa, um, where the children are saving for a new home. And given the current market, they kind of need that buffer in order to be able to invest in their first home. There's there's rental income prop like income opportunities and in addition that's when our institutional clients come in like we just did a project in San Diego for a client that had an unused parking lot that they needed additional housing because their units were all full so we were able to build two single units that allowed them to have three bedroom floor plans for each of those and for these people to have additional space there too so it's it's everything I mean even down to we have a ton of families that use it for children or family members with disability that want some independence, but they also need their own space. So there's a lot of really heartwarming stories there too. Mm -hmm. And you've obviously spent a lot of money on marketing and making your website, I would say, you know, Tesla-like. So that villahomes.com, if you guys want to check it out and see, um, see the process. But essentially, you're able to go through the visualization process, right? You're able to see what that particular model is going to look like with even some different color variations, a different setup. Are, are you able to purchase it online all the way through now or where? No, there's still a construction process. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's still the unknowns, right? Like we don't know everything to do with your site, what's underground, what hills you're on, that kind of thing. So we do go through our due diligence in that. So that's where you'd purchase what we call a feasibility study. So on our site, you can get a free instant quote to get an idea of it. You can actually map your home on your actual lot, which is proprietary technology that we've developed that really helps you visualize the space and the setbacks as Sean was speaking to, to help you understand how big you could possibly go. Or maybe you want something really small and like where that would actually go in your yard. But pretty much all the way through till we have an idea of the type of home that you want, the space that you have and the general restrictions then we move into the feasibility study stage, which is 
It's $500, but if you asked any architect to do this for you, it would be thousands of dollars. And that's where we go into the entire depth of your site. So we really understand what the utility structure is like, if there's any blockers, that kind of thing, so that we can give you the most accurate quote possible after we've done that due diligence. And with the popularity of, of this type of housing rising, do you find that it's starting to become easier to work with local municipalities? In California, you, you feel like they're more open to the idea just because of the the housing crisis that you face compared to other states? Like, what are you seeing within, or is, is it completely, you know, like localized? So I, I can imagine that a lot of residents would have, again, certain notions about adding another house in the back of the house, or maybe it's the California lifestyle, right? It's almost like the pool house. Uh, like, do you see that a lot of municipalities are giving pushback on that or like some are more open to that? And, and what do you think is the difference between them? Well, in California, we're fortunate that the laws over the last several years have really opened up the ability to build an ADU. And in, in many ways, the state has come in and overridden local authority in a lot of ways uh, to basically tear down the barriers to building an ADU. And that's somewhat unique to California at this point, but other states are moving in this direction as well. And so what we find when we go to work with lots of the different authorities having jurisdiction or AHJs, which are the different towns or counties that we're working with to permit ADUs, they're generally pretty receptive to it. And ultimately, they're motivated to add housing into their communities. And ADUs are a really good way to do that. And it's a situation where the policy changes in California have been pretty well embraced across the board. And it's an example, in some ways, a rare example of government policy kind of getting out of the way to allow the private market to solve a big problem, which is a lack of housing. And that's a that's a good thing. And so we have really collaborative relationships with lots of different AHJs that we work with to permit homes. And we've also done this hundreds of times across many, many, basically every jurisdiction in California at this point. So we know what they're looking for. We've got a really robust database on exactly what it takes to get something done everywhere. And that gives us a lot of credibility with our customers to know what's going to be required what it's going to cost, how long it's going to take. And we could be really upfront with that information because we've done it before so many times. And that that matters a lot for building trust with our customers ultimately. So speaking of how much it's going to cost and how long does it take? So compared to a regular home and you know your traditional stick build, say it's a, a thousand square foot home versus a manufacturer, I should say prefabricated home, like, what are we looking at time-wise and cost-wise? Is it day and night or like, what's what's that look like? It, it's pretty different, but again, like everything in construction, it depends. So it depends what you're building and at what spec level and size and where you are geographically. But generally what we find is from a cost perspective, our types of homes have a pretty material discount relative to the cost of building a traditional stick built custom home. And that discount can be upwards of 50% for the home and the foundation. And of course, every site is different, every home is different, but the discount can be very, very material in terms of the ultimate cost to the client, which is part of the reason we've had so much traction in, in what we do. And then in terms of speed, if you're going to be stick building an ADU or, or a home, that, that could easily be a 12 month plus project of on-site construction. Generally, we're in and out on site in three to four months. And most of the disruption is just on the first few days of the installation of the home. And then the rest of it is close out, which is far less disruptive. So if you're living in your primary home, prefab is a really compelling solution because it's a matter of weeks of construction disruption versus a year potentially of construction disruption. And that's a big deal. Like not a lot of people want to have an active construction site and open trenches and crazy stuff happening in their backyard for months and months and months. And so we're able to go a lot faster and do it at a lower price. And that that matters for a lot of people and that works pretty well. Absolutely. And I know in traditional construction, we've had some crazy issues with supply chain. Obviously during COVID, everybody suddenly wanted to remodel their home and you couldn't get a garage door for months and months on end. So has that impacted 
your side of the business or the fact that it's more controlled environment in, in essentially a factory environment? Um, have you been able to handle that better? Yeah, there were some disruptions back in 2021 in particular, but those supply chain issues have pretty much all been worked out at this point. And we've actually seen in, in some places costs coming down, which is a good thing for our, our clients ultimately. And basically today and going forward, the advantage of building the home in a factory is you know the cost certainty up front. And there's not going to be surprises around, oh, the electrical contractor is going to cost you twice as much as you think because the factory is going to do it. The pricing is committed up front. And you know what the timeline is going to be because it's built in a factory. So you don't have to worry about trying to have a general contractor line up all the different trades across mechanical, electrical, plumbing, structural. Like there's a, all these things that you need to do in site build construction and getting subcontractors to come in on time in the right order and do their thing creates a lot of risk for a one home project. Whereas if you're building it in a factory, that risk is completely off the table and everything's known up front. And, and that, that matters a lot. I'm surprised that you said that you guys actually do have model homes because we I do. would think that with this model, it's almost all internet based uh, sales. But in your case, you do have models. Talk to me about where do you pick location for the models? How do you staff the model? Do you use any technology outside of the agents where people are able to come in maybe during off hours to visit? So talk to me about the, the experience that that consumers would have actually coming in on site to check out these model homes. We wanted to serve like our two main areas, which is Northern California and Southern California and make everything within driving distance to most folks. So we've got two model homes in the Bay Area, one in the South Bay and one in the East Bay. And then we have one in San Diego as well. And we're looking into hopefully getting one in LA this year as in addition to that. And these are homes that we've been able to rent back from people who have built them so that we can show them physically. Which is, which is great because like to Sean's point, to be able to touch, feel, see a product like this, especially when you're spending this level of money is really helpful, especially with the preconceived notions that people have about prefab homes. So we have model home consultants that man these and are there to answer any questions. You can walk through and touch and see everything. We can walk you through the entire process. And it's just like a great way for people to get their eyes on what they're ultimately purchasing. So they range in a number of sizes. So you can really get a good feel for that as well. But we don't have them like sitting in a parking lot somewhere because these are not that type of home. Um, they're, the builders are starting to move away from building multiple model homes in the community where now we see maybe they're building one model home and invest the rest into virtual um, homes. So do you feel that when somebody's purchasing an ADU, granted it is a smaller, smaller home, smaller investment, do you, but do you think that it still is just important for them to see that, that physical model or do you feel like more and more people are are okay purchasing a home just by viewing it online? Some are and some aren't. You know, I think that's really a difference of opinion, essentially. So we have Matterports and all the typical real estate tools that someone would use where you can walk through an entire home, a video of an entire home. We have tons of photography from everything that we've done. And but then for some people, it's really important for them to actually see it like to touch the countertops and see the type of wood we use and see the flooring that we use and be able to walk into a home and see that it's seamless. Like there aren't, even though it is prefab, you can't actually tell where the seams were. And that really helps build trust in them. So that's why we have, we have both options and cater to both types of people. Yeah, we find that it's almost like if you have a model home and you build a virtual twin of that model home, that helps to build trust enormously because if you're looking online and you see this beautiful model home and then you get to come in physically and experience that same model home and you're like mm -hmm. wow what I saw online was actually so closely matched to what I am experiencing now in person that mm -hmm. really helps to overcome a lot yeah. of the challenges so mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so how have you been approaching your marketing differently from a traditional builder you are targeting kind of a different different buyer right it's you, you are selling essentially to like a, a to homeowner already so talk to me a little bit about what's been working for you in terms of attracting that ideal buyer 
And how do you see it being different from traditional marketing to maybe first time home buyers or just typical buyers of real estate? Yeah. So, I mean, I think for us is just providing a really incredible customer experience. I mean, typical construction, I think because most of us, our parents, our parents' parents have dealt with it their whole lives. There's a certain expectation that it's just, you know, you get an estimate, you kind of go along the process and what comes up is what comes up. Um, but we've really pr tried to provide transparency and handholding through the entire experience. So firstly, we're really transparent with our prices. You can see all of our prices on our website. We tried to provide you an instant quote, like based on the little knowledge that we have about your site so that you can kind of get a feel for what you're looking at cost wise. Then we layer in the fact that you can actually physically come in and see it in person. Then we layer on the fact that you can have consultations with our team where they can walk you through it and answer all of your questions. We have design consultations, but you can also design things online. So really catering to all types of personalities, making sure that we're available in any capacity that someone needs. Because we have our, our buyers that have done construction a million times and they kind of know what to expect and they know that permitting is a problem and they know that they have you know, a blocked utility line in their backyard. And then we have people that this is their first time ever doing it. So we want to make it as easy and as comfortable for them as well. So it's really a mixture of technology and people. So we do, we do both things. I love that. We mostly work with uh, your traditional home builders. And one of the biggest things that we always try to push for is transparency, especially showing pricing. And it is been the biggest battle I would say for home builders just to show their pricing and the thing that we always hear is like well I don't want to give away everything because they're not going to want to come into per in person and then we can't sell them or my my competitor is going to know what I'm charging so obviously you guys are dealing with the same thing right but yeah. it doesn't seem to be an issue that's something that we really leaned into like our competitors do a number of different things and for us it's really that that honesty. So if they come to us and they feel like maybe we're a bit out of their price range, nine times out of 10, if they actually go through the process with one of our competitors, they'll find out that we in fact are actually more affordable. So we trust that when they do their due diligence, that when they come back to us, they'll feel more confident in our process because we were upfront about everything. And we really walked them through all of the worst case scenarios, which I really think is our responsibility as a builder is to let them know like these are all the things that could go wrong are we hoping that those don't go wrong yes absolutely but really educating them so that they feel empowered along the process yeah i think we seem to always over promise and, and then under deliver during the construction <laughs> phase mm -hmm. so you seem to be doing the opposite which is obviously working for you so sean where do you see your company in say the next five years what are the plans i'm sure you guys are growing like crazy so what, what do you think is going to be coming in the next five years? Where do you see yourselves? Yeah, well, f five years is an eternity for a, an early stage startup. So it's, it's hard to say, but the things that we're focused on are really delivering on our mission. And I think over the next five years, you'll see Villa operational in a handful of different states and cities that have really good real estate fundamentals where it makes sense for us to do our type of infill building with prefab. So that'll be markets that are accommodating to ADUs, which is California and increasingly other places throughout the country that are working on legislation that enables ADU building. And then beyond that, we're, we've already done some of this and we'll be doing more of it, building little communities of primary homes through prefab. And that's something we're really excited about doing because there aren't that many builders focused on doing that. And I think you'll see us in a handful of really high quality cities in good states with you know, really good fundamentals, building housing where it needs to be and doing that in innovative ways with our factory partners to do that at a fast speed, low cost, high quality. And that's what we're all about. So, you know, we'll be hopefully a lot bigger and, you know, available in many different places for consumers to explore Villa's home options over time. And we're, we're excited to grow the company and five, five years, it's hard to say exactly how big we'll be, but we'll be bigger than we are today and in more places than we are today doing more types of housing than we are today. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what, what that looks like. Yeah, I'm super excited for your business model. I'm, I'm excited because I think truly in manufactured homes is where the future is, if we're going to be able to provide the supply that this 
country needs and the quality for the the changes in the in the environment. As we wrap up the conversation, is there anything that I didn't ask you guys that you think is important for our listeners to know, whether it's about ADUs, manufactured homes, or anything else that we didn't talk about? No, I think it was pretty comprehensive. And if folks are interested, they can check us out at Villa Homes, V-I-L-L-A homes.com. And there's tons of fun stuff to do on our website. And you can learn a ton about what we do as a business and ADUs and our perspectives on the housing market all from there. So check it out. Yeah. Yes, definitely, guys. Check out if you're looking for that Tesla experience website that I know you're always coming to us and telling us that's what we want. You can get some uh, some great ideas for what is possible uh, with villahomes.com. Thank you both, Sean and Jessica, for being here today. I really, really appreciate your time. And then uh, do either of you hang out anywhere on social media where our listeners can connect with you personally if they have any questions for you? Yeah, you can always find us on LinkedIn. So. <laughs> Thank you so much both for being on here today. Any plans for uh, International Builders Show or any events coming up for you guys where people can connect? We will have a team at IBS. So if you're going to be there and you're interested in meeting with us, reach out. Awesome. So we'll we'll see you at IBS then. Awesome. Thanks a ton. Thanks, Anya. Bye.